Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is the second installment in the Paper Mario franchise. It was well received by critics for its captivating storyline and exciting gameplay. Released on October 11th, 2004 in North America, Paper Mario TTYD would go on to sell 1.5 million copies in the US. I remember as a kid spending hours and hours playing through the game over one summer, completely captivated by the paper-style world that I could explore. As you might already know, there's a small subset of gamers called speedrunners. Their main goal? To beat a game as fast as possible. And it wouldn't be long before they would give TTYD a try. In this video, I'm going to show you how the efforts of the TTYD community led to the breaking of the game and ultimately led to this happening. This is the world record history for Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Any Percent. The first speedrun of Paper Mario that I was able to get my hands on was on June 24th, 2005 by James Bunkley, who goes by the online name Brown Bomber. Without many resources, he managed to beat Paper Mario TTYD on the English version with an in-game time of 7 hours and 11 minutes. So first off, let's explain what any percent means. Any percent means completing the game as fast as possible through any possible means besides cheating. That means glitches and shortcuts are allowed. For the first few years of TTYD speedrunning, that simply meant beating every chapter, collecting every crystal star, and beating the Shadow Queen as fast as possible, though this would come to change in the following years. Second, it's worth mentioning that this was a segmented speedrun. Segmented runs are different from today's more common form of single segment runs, in that the runner can redo sections of the game as many times as they want, until they're happy with the result. For example, Brown Bomber's first segment ends after arriving at Petal Meadows. From there, he can attempt his next segment. If he messes up in the next segment, then he can keep reloading his save in Petal Meadows and retry. Though this run was the first of its kind, it did have some pretty noticeable strategies. Towards the beginning of the run, he relied heavily on Fright Map masks which allow you to scare low level enemies away quickly. He also used Danger Mario, wherein he lowers Mario's total HP to 5 for permanent danger state. With the help of 8 Power Rush badges, which boost your attack damage by 2 when you're at 5 HP or lower, his damage is permanently increased by 16, allowing him to blow through bosses with ease. With such a long runtime and almost no shortcuts, this game didn't really stand out from any other speedrun at this point. In 2009, Mark Wong completed a segmented speedrun with an in-game time of 7 hours and 7 minutes. I thought it was interesting to note that Mark Wong was aware of window jump in Hooktail's Castle, a small trick where you jump from the bridge straight to the window. This skips a small cutscene of hitting the switch with coops and revealing a section of bridge right underneath the window. This trick is even harder on the European or PAL version. This has to do with the frame rate that the game runs at. European games tend to run at 50Hz, whereas North American and Japanese games run at 60Hz. This results in Mario actually only walking at 5 6 the speed in PAL as he does in NTSC. At the time, runners chose to use in-game time rather than real time because of the NTSC and PAL version differences. Though Mario walked slower in the PAL version, the in-game timer was unaffected by the slower frame rate. Though this run didn't have anything incredible in it, it was seen as a significant improvement over Brown Bomber's run with overall better movement and routing. Like I mentioned earlier, both Brown Bomber and Mark Wong's speedruns were segmented, as was popular at the time. It wasn't until July 2010 when a Japanese runner by the name of Sazanami would complete the first known single segment speedrun in 11 hours and 11 minutes. A few months later, Rikuma improved the time by a full hour, and then by another hour in December. It's worth noting that both these players chose to end timing when the end appears on screen after the credits. This method of timing was used for very many years afterwards just to keep with tradition. It wasn't until the end of the following year when on August 3rd, 2011, a Japanese player by the name of Kanku brought down the single segment time by an astonishing 2 hours down to a 7 hour and 9 minute run. Two weeks later and he improves his record down to a 7 hour and 2 minute run, then improves again in November down to 6 hours and 45 minutes. This begged the question, if a single segment run was now capable of a sub 7 hour time, what potential did a future segmented run have? On January 6, 2012, Nami Nami uploaded the last chapter of a brand new segmented speedrun for Paper Mario TTYD. He achieved a time of 6 hours, 18 minutes, and 35 seconds, which was a pretty incredible improvement over the previous segmented runs. At this point, there were still barely any glitches found, so Nami Nami's improvement came solely due to better routing thanks to a Speed Demos Archive user by the name of Miles. It's worth noting that he used a pretty ancient trick called Gate Handle Early that was found by Samurai Man actually, who you might know from his Super Mario Sunshine and Legend of Zelda speedruns.
This trick allows the player to avoid going in boat mode at the top of the waterfall in the pirate's grotto, and going all the way down and to the left in order to grab the handle. This trick effectively saved around 2-3 to three minutes. Now it's time to introduce you to a new runner who you might be well aware of. Like, that's... <laughs> that's how hard it is to even get this game down to an optimal time. Like, I don't think it's ever gonna happen. This is Almo. His first speedrun of TTYD was completed in July of 2012 with a time of 7 hours and 45 minutes. It was exactly an hour slower than the current best single segment time from Konku the year before. Within the month, Almo improved his run to a 6.56.36, and by the next month he beat Konku's single segment world record with a time of 6.43.05, thus beginning Almo's reign as the long-standing TTYD world record holder. Almo was making his movement and gameplay more and more optimal, but Almo and viewers couldn't help but wonder what the future of TTYD speedrunning would hold. It had been several years, and the only trick found was gate handle early. Was this game too solid? Would world record attempts come down to relying on luck and completely optimal movement? Until one day, Nathan is bored uploaded this. He found that pressing X with the optional partner Miss Mouse right before falling into water allows you to regain control of Mario high up in the air when you close out of her text box. This glitch would allow you to open up the chapter 5 and 6 warp pipes way earlier than intended. As a result, you could complete chapter 5 up until obtaining Bobbery. Afterwards, you can immediately leave through the pipe, take the left pipe to Poshley Heights and enter the train from the station. The game reads that this is Mario's first time entering the train, so it starts chapter 6 immediately and actually skips a cutscene that normally occurs at the beginning of the train ride. From there, you can complete chapter 6 up until reaching Poshley Heights again, go back to the Pirate's Grotto to get the Paper Boat Curse, and then go back to the Poshley Sanctum to obtain the Garnet Star. As a result, this skips the puzzle to enter the grotto, the second half of the grotto, the Cortez and Lord Crump battles, a Peach and Bowser intermission, a trip to the Thousand Year Door, and the train ticket quest. Though you would have to travel to Hooktail's castle again to complete the trouble to obtain Miss Mouse, this still shaved off 22 minutes in the run, and for the first time, any percent no longer meant you had to obtain all 7 crystal stars. You would no longer have to fight Cortez or obtain the 5th crystal star. Within a few months, Alma managed to trim off 21 minutes from his record and achieved the 6 hour, 3 minute, and 45 second time, but he still wasn't done improving yet. Almo had managed to save the 22 minutes from this route change, yet he was able to optimize his record down further by 8 minutes, achieving a sub 6 hour time. His time was going to be incredibly hard to beat without any newly found tricks. And then Chronikees showed up. Chronikees was already a well respected and successful glitch hunter for her previous work in Banjo Tooie and Banjo Kazooie. She decided to take a look at Paper Mario this time, and she did not disappoint. To quote the description of her first TTYD video, and so it begins. Right off the bat, Chronikees found a 2 minute time saver in Chapter 8. Jumping far up enough past this bridge outside Riddle Tower allows you to skip the Shadow Sirens fight. She began to find many more optimizations, including Wooden Wheel Skip, which saves a minute, a Green Switch Skip to save 15 seconds, a way to avoid Bill Blasters, which could save up to 45 seconds, 
a chapter one staircase flip skit. And various grotto time savers. She was right, and so it begins. She showed people that there were undoubtedly new discoveries yet to be found. After these tricks were found, Almo began to continue making improvements to his record. After TTYD's first year of significant glitch findings, Alma would end with a 548.57. I closed out the year by releasing an any% percent task that I'd been working on with Cool Kirby 2000 and Master June. We managed to obtain a time about 50 minutes faster than the world record. If you aren't aware of what a task is, they're a bit different from normal speedruns. Instead of a player using a controller and playing at the normal game speed, Tassers go into a game emulator on their computers and tell the emulator which buttons are going to be pressed on each frame. Through the use of slowdown and save states, Tassers can redo sections over and over again until they achieve a theoretically perfect run. This task was far from perfect, but it did give light as to what the theoretical limit would be with every current glitch taken into account. A few months after, a glitch hunter by the name of T-Will14 shook up the any% percent route some more. He discovered through the use of a glitch called a Goombella Buffer that you could go out of bounds in the Great Tree and skip a cutscene involving the punies getting trapped in a cage. Going down the pipe that is normally inaccessible at this time allows the player to reach the end of chapter 2 much earlier than originally possible. This came with a small side effect, we still need the super boots and this glitch skips the cutscene that makes us go get them. Well if we reach the end of the chapter and go back to the room before the super boots, the path to the super boots room is actually opened up. Grabbing the super boots reverts the game back to a mid chapter 2 state, which means we have to go back down the pipe we came up through and trigger the ending to the chapter all over again. As a result, there's a second countdown timer ticking away, and it lasts for quite a long time. This saves a good amount of time on its own, but referencing an old video where you can jump onto Grubba's bookcase from his couch, it was discovered that we could incorporate a new route for Chapter 3. Here's how it works. Go through Chapter 3 up until you get the Super Hammer. From there, we need to de-rank to level 16 in order to get out of the Major League and in order to avoid complications with the Yoshi Egg cutscene for Bookcase Jump to work later. Go back to Chapter 2, enter the cage and break the panel to revert the game to a Chapter 2 state, and go back to Chapter 3 and talk to Grubba. At this point, the game will think you're talking to Grubba for the first time. He gives you a tour and you can say that you don't want to become a fighter, specifically so that you're able to walk around in his office. Immediately after, jump from the couch at a precise angle and you can clip up to the air vent. Entering this vent causes the game to think you're at the end of the chapter and you can fight Macho Grubba right after. This cuts out almost all of the Major League fights as well as the Rockhawk fight and several cutscenes, saving time and hassle from dealing with RNG among all of those fights. Shortly thereafter, Almo sprang back into action and began grinding his record down some more.
After he improved to a 536.39 on July 16th, things simmered down for a little bit, but that didn't last long. T. Will came back yet again with another route shakeup, but it wasn't just a route shakeup. Ultra Hammer Early was found, and it was the first glitch that separated the English and Japanese versions of the game. Using a trick called a Flurry Super Slide, Mario can enter the indoor while using Flurry and slide directly onto the outside seam of the building. From there, you can just walk over to the Ultra Hammer chest and open it. Well, what does this mean? We obtained the Ultra Hammer four chapters earlier than intended. First and foremost, this meant that we no longer needed to obtain the Super Hammer in Chapter 3. We can now get Yoshi and D-Rank right away, skipping all of the Major League fights, as well as several more cutscenes. In addition, we now have a way to access all of the warp pipes without the use of Fish Glitch, meaning we didn't need to go out of our ways to get Mouse anymore. Oh yeah, and this made the ticking last until entering Chapter 4. With a 25 minute time save potential, runners on the English version were now at a disadvantage because of this Japanese only trick. To explain the version differences, the Japanese version of the game was released two and a half months before the North American version. As a result, certain game mechanics are slightly different. The Flurry Super Slide on the Japanese version allows Mario to move downwards onto the left seam of the building, whereas the English version causes you to super slide left and right. Therefore, this current method of Ultra Hammer Early would not be possible in the English version. If anyone wanted to get the fastest possible time of the game, they now had to buy a Japanese version of the game. Right after the discovery of Ultra Hammer Early, Alma made a pace spin to jot down some of his ideas for theoretical time savers in the game, and it gives us a good insight as to what the goals the community had for glitch hunting at the time. The most notable glitches were to find a way to get to Chapter 4 without Yoshi, a glitch called Palace Skip, and a way to access the teleporter room in Rogueport sewers early. With all these potential glitches in their future, the TTYD community eagerly sought after new glitches. Along the way, they found out how buggy TTYD could really be. Excuse me? And guess who sprang into action to improve their time? Zephylus, actually. He took over Almo's two-year reign as the world record holder with a time of 5.14.39 on Halloween 2014. Zephylus had only been speedrunning the game since two months back. He quickly learned the TTYD route and followed closely behind Almo's time leading up to Ultra Hammer Early's discovery. The window for improvement allowed Zeph to take over the world record. The following day, he improved his run by nearly three minutes. Almo's competition with Zeph motivated him to improve the record by a further four minutes. Both players had mastered Ultra Hammer early, and were now aiming to optimize their movement and overall gameplay. Before the end of the year, I released my second Any% percent task, showcasing the theoretical limit of the game at the time. I was able to introduce Log Pipe Early and Bookcase Jump, as well as Ultra Hammer Early, into the task. I achieved a time of 4.15.48, again, about 50 minutes faster than Almo's current record of 5.07. Competition was at a standstill. No one was successful in beating Almo's record, and motivation was low with such an optimal record. Out of pure laziness, I failed to test a theoretical way of performing a new skip in the game. DSY Dude had found that on the first frame after leaving a battle, Pressing A allows you to perform a jump mid-air. It was theorized that we could have enough height to make it onto the ledge that leads to the Chapter 4 pipe. 
And as it turns out, we found out that it is possible, just barely, with two full height jumps. With that, Yoshi Skip was discovered. Without the need to Yoshi hover over to the Chapter 4 pipe room, we didn't need Yoshi. As a result, we no longer needed to fight our way up the ranks in the minor league. We could enter Chapter 3 and immediately fight Grubba to end the chapter. We do need Yoshi later in the run, but he magically appears after defeating Dupless in Chapter 4. It was pretty hard for runners to get the hang of this trick because, on top of the frame-perfect input required for the jump, the angle required to clip up onto the ledge was pretty precise on its own. And this trick had to be performed twice. The first time you enter the Chapter 4 pipe, you're rejected. You have to first talk to Darkly to get your name written on your back, and then you'll be able to enter Chapter 4. About half a week after the discovery of Yoshi Skip, T-Will 14 found a way to enter the Pirate's Grotto early. By Gumbella buffering out of bounds and placing Bobbery inside the right wall, we can break open the entrance to the grotto and skip going back left to talk to Flavio, as well as skip bringing Flavio back to solve the entrance puzzle, effectively saving around 40 seconds. A runner by the name I'm Dead joined in on the competition and achieved a time of 5 hours, 6 minutes, and 30 seconds. While only a minute faster than the previous world record, he was the first person to pull off this trick in a world record run. Alma returned once again to reclaim his world record. For a while at this point, we had been theorizing a skip that would significantly shorten the route. We dubbed it Teleporter Room Early. If we found some way of accessing the Teleporter Room in Rogueport Sewers, we could warp to Chapter 7, which would skip the long process of hunting around for General White and traveling to the moon. This long sought after glitch finally became a reality on June 3rd, 2015. A glitch hunter by the name Solidified Gaming discovered how we can use what's called a Bobbery glitch to enter this building, yet stay outside. From there, we can flurry super slide downwards into the teleporter room since the camera's rotated. By cutting out the general white hunt and the trip to the moon, we were able to save around another 20 minutes. Because this trick involves flurry super sliding downwards, this glitch was only possible in the Japanese version, further separating the Japanese any percent speedrun from the slower English speedrun. Just two days after the discovery of Teleporter Room Early, Zephyrus managed to achieve the world record by improving Amo's run by seven minutes. Almo fought back and improved Zeph's time by a whopping 23 minutes. I integrated this new glitch into a new any% task, and I managed to get a time of 3 hours, 35 minutes, and 16 seconds with yet more tiny optimizations, as well as a lot of crazy RNG manipulation. In addition, 
Solidified Gaming discovered Bobbery early, which is a way of obtaining Bobbery without ever triggering the start of Chapter 5. All we have to do is Goombella Buffer out of bounds and ride Yoshi towards an out of bounds ember. This ember normally stands in front of the tree that Bobbery hides in, so engaging in battle with it causes the game to treat you as if you've made progress through Chapter 5. After leaving battle, you can talk to Bobbery and have him join your party. Almo made sure to defend his record, improving upon it four more times over the next few months using both Teleporter Room early as well as Bobbery early. He achieved a time of 4 hours, 12 minutes, and 31 seconds. Viewers and speedrun enthusiasts were left wondering, was there anything left to be found? Ever since people began playing around with an infinite height cheat code, they discovered that the loading zone that contains the key to Grotus's lair is loaded underneath the floor in this room. If there was ever a way to access that loading zone out of bounds, we knew that TTYD as a speed game would completely change. And then this happened. Did not hear the jump, so I have to do it after 63. I heard the jump. The hunt was over, Palace Skip was real, and the only partners and tricks we needed to perform it were Gumbella, Koops, Yoshi, and a double jump. And how to perform the trick? Well, all you have to do is use a trick called Delayed Gumbella Buffers to get a glitch called Tech Storage twice, move to the left side of the room and have Koops start a battle off screen, perform a glitch called the Yoshi Teleport, land on a spring underneath the room, maneuver on the narrow seam of the room, manipulate Yoshi to fall with a delay, lure an ember towards you, Yoshi teleport slightly underneath the floor, and double jump up to the loading zone. Okay, if you didn't understand any of that, I don't blame you. The method for this trick to work was unbelievably and unimaginably difficult. There were so many things that could go wrong due to the sheer difficulty of everything I mentioned. A month later, Solidified Gaming managed to find a much faster and easier way to perform Palace Skip. And the best part was that it was actually reasonable for a human to do in real time. I go into detail in my explanation video, which I'll link in the description below. Again, it's worth mentioning that this method is only possible in the Japanese version of the game, giving the player an advantage of almost two hours over English now. With the introduction of Palace Skip into the route, we eliminated the need to go to Riddle Tower, Chapter 4, Chapter 5, and Chapter 6, meaning we would complete the game with only four crystal stars. It's worth noting that, by this point, every glitch except the one that Almo theorized in his pace bin became real. Ideas that were so surreal just back in 2014 were now a reality. The TTYD community got to work trying to pull off this glitch in a run. Only three days after SG found this new method, a runner named Sorik pulled off his first world record in TTYD with a time of 3 hours, 40 minutes, and 22 seconds. He then managed to improve his time twice in July, down to a 3 hour, 8 minute, 40 second time. At this point, people quickly began to realize that sub-3 hours would be possible. 
On September 4th, 2016, Solidified Gaming discovered a trick called Hazard Respawn Glitch, jumping first frame when you enter a room and continuing to do frame-perfect jumps into a body of water will cause the game to skip storing the location where Mario was last standing. As a result, Mario is sent to the center of the room. In the case of the blooper fight room, this allows the player to land directly on the pipe to Pedalberg. By performing this trick right after obtaining the Paper Plane Curse, we can effectively skip a trip to the Thousand Year Door, several cutscenes after that visit, and the blooper fight entirely, cutting out several more minutes from the run. As a result, Frankly stays with our party until we meet Punio in Chapter 2. After a small intermission, on November 23rd, 2016, Sorik achieved the first sub 3 hour time with 2 hours, 59 minutes, and 4 seconds, and he would hold this record for half a year. At the start of the next year, I released my latest TTYD task. It was the ultimate showcase of every single optimization and trick we had found over the course of several years. I clocked in with a final time of 2.16.52. On May 14th, 2017, Alma returned with a 2 hour 56 48 minute time, which he would then also hold for half a year, until Sorik took it back with a 2.53.54. It's worth noting that, after this run, the community voted to change the timing method used. Rather than end time at the end screen after the credits, we would now end time when the credits started. Ultimately, more people preferred to end timing early, and so it was adopted on the leaderboards. With this new timing method, Sorik's World Record time became a 2.48.38. He would only hold it for a few more months, until a runner by the name of Yoshizilla claimed the record. He shaved off a few seconds from Sorik's time, achieving a 2 hour, 48 minute, 23 second run, on January 25th, 2018. This record still stands today, and showcases many optimizations that have been found throughout the years. Now, I haven't really mentioned anything about the progress that the community made with the English category. We kept finding all these cool tricks that only worked on the Japanese version, with seemingly no notable improvements to the English route. Going into 2017, Almo held the English world record with a time of 5 hours, 10 minutes, and 11 seconds, but the English category as we knew it was about to change. On January 5th, 2017, a glitch hunter by the name Really Tall found a way to perform Teleported Room early on the English version through the use of Miss Mouse and Ultra Boots. The explanation for this is kind of complicated, so make sure you check out Really Tall's video for this glitch in the description. We did have to go out of our way to get Miss Mouse, but we had effectively cut out another 10 minutes in the run. Yoshizilla took the record and quickly improved his time half a week later. Two weeks pass and Sorik shaves off just 15 seconds from Yoshizilla's run. Then half a week later, Almo chomped off almost 5 minutes, achieving a time of 4.57.03. A month later, Zef took the record, improving upon Almo's time by almost 2 full minutes. Almo then trimmed off another 3.5 minutes the following month, and then half a month later, Zef improved yet again with a 4 hour, 50 minute, 39 second time. The world record had once again become substantially optimal, and it was going to be hard to beat. A full month after, on May 13th, 2017, K. 
Community members by the names Veneve, red to go and Zansav all collaborated together and found English Paliskip. A proper explanation for a trick like this can only be done justice in a video of its own, so check out Zansav's video or my video in the description below. This version managed to cut out an astonishing 25 minutes from the run, because we could now skip all of Chapter 5. Then on March 6th, 2018, Solidified Gaming discovered a new way of performing Teleported Room early. All you needed was Tooth Mode. We no longer needed the Ultra Boots, so we no longer needed to complete Chapter 6. With the help of an English Paddle Skip method that doesn't require the Ultra Boots, we no longer needed to go through Chapter 6 to obtain the Ultra Boots, which means we can leave Chapter 4 right after obtaining Tooth Mode. Earlier, Solidified Gaming had discovered a glitch called a Super Jump, which would allow the player to jump infinitely high in the air. Abusing this glitch in a particular way while in paper mode allows you to jump your way into the teleporter room from the side. Again, for a detailed explanation, I highly suggest watching SG's video on this and reading his video description. In addition, this Super Jump glitch also meant we had an easy way to obtain the Ultra Hammer early on the English version of the game now. The following day, Sorik was able to pull this off in a run, obtaining a 3 hour, 13 minute, 56 second run on June 1st, 2018. And just a few days ago as of uploading this, Ed was able to improve Sorik's time by 6 additional minutes, and he currently stands as the record holder in the English category. The Japanese and English versions of the game once stood about 2 hours apart from each other, but it came full circle, and English is only about 20 minutes behind the Japanese version now, though there is a decent amount of room to improve in English still. To think that a game whose speedrun was stagnant around 6 hours for a while would be completely chopped in half is mind-blowing. We began with a game that was deemed too solid. No one thought anything would be found like there was in Paper Mario 64, which was being completely broken at that point in time. Yet, here we are half a decade later. We don't know what the future holds for TTYD. We don't know if there will be any more tricks found, such as Blimp Ticket Skip. But what I can tell you is that resilience and perseverance can break any roadblocks or barriers towards your goal. And that when a community of speedrunners want to go fast, they will. Thanks for watching.